Well, I think martial arts gave me a sense of myself, for sure. I'm a very, very clumsy person. It probably kept me from breaking more limbs than, than necessary because I, I really, I'll walk down the street and fall down. But it actually kind of gave me, I guess, a sense of my body and myself. You know, at the same time, it probably gave me a false sense of security. I mean, like, I really thought when I was a 12-year-old Taekwondo black belt, I could disarm a gunman and stuff like that. You know, it's just like you know, after a while you kind of learn there's a little bit more to it than that. And I think what's cool about fighting is it, it makes me come to that reality about myself every single time. Um, you know, MMA is a, it's a, it's a sport where you can't be half-assed. You can't half-ass it. You have, to, you have to be present. And I've learned that lesson over and over and over again, that you can't be overtrained or undertrained. You have to just be exactly right. And um, it's humbling. But it's, it's good to know as a human being, like you can only grow from when you mess up, I think. Um, I'd heard about the UFC. The first mixed mar martial arts fight I saw was a UFC, but it was horrible. It was like the Ken Shamrock, Hoist Gracie 2 or 3, I don't remember which one. The one where it was like 25 minutes of grappling and I had no idea what was going on. I was bored out of my mind. But then right after that, my friend put in the Hook and Shoot uh, Revolution DVD, which was the all-female fight show that Jeff Osborne had. And that, I was like, oh, hell, the women are interesting. They're not just hugging each other, which I've done in fights before. Now that I understand the, the sport, I'm like, yeah, it's a little harder to get away from than you'd think. You, know, you definitely want to throw down every moment, but uh, sometimes they grab onto you and they don't let go. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, they, but seriously, I, I, when, I, you know, when I saw that, I was like, this is actually something I could do. This is something that I want to learn and I want to be a part of, and it really opened my eyes to mixed martial arts. I mean, when you talk about first fight, there was my first smoker and my first kickboxing fight and then my first mixed martial arts fight. My first mixed martial arts fight was in 2004, and I had had a lot of Taekwondo experience up until that point. Not that much jujitsu, like, you know, maybe a couple of years of jujitsu with that. Um, same with Muay Thai. I think Muay Thai and jujitsu I kind of discovered around the same time. Um, and I had also, when I had my first smoker, like the first time I was actually in physical combat where they didn't say point and you run away, uh, was in California. When I decided to fight Aaron Webb, that girl and I went to California and met Debbie Purcell, Marco Huaz, Brian Popejoy, um, all of these people who, you know, Eric Paulson, we trained Eric Paulson, we were at the Inasano Academy, like we were traveling all over getting different looks and they found us a smoker and so I did, I think it was a Muay Thai smoker. and. Um, that, I mean, I don't even remember anything that happened during that fight at all. I, I don't remember anything of that fight. I remember in between the first and second round, the ref came over and said, we're going to make this a two-round fight. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? What, what's a two-round fight? I didn't know. I was beating the shit out of the girl. I had no idea. Like, I blanked. Um, and, and then and my, my coach told me, shut up and sit down. And he said, you know she doesn't need another round to finish her off. And they just kind of wandered away. And I was like, how do you make it a two-round? You know, but it was a smoker. Like, you change things in smoking. It's like, it's not really... It's fighting, but it's not fighting, you know? And so I didn't realize that, but that was like the most affirming thing. Like, I'll never forget him saying that because I was like, holy crap, I must be winning. I didn't even know. When I had my first mixed martial arts fight, I fought on the hook and shoot show. And that was just like a strange convergence of circumstance. Um, that, that was the first show I'd ever seen. I lived in Indiana. They found me out. They put me on there and I won by uh, armbar. And Jeff Osborne, the promoter, actually put me on the cover of that DVD, and I was like, wow, like for a first fight, that's kind of remarkable. I'm a feminist, uh, very much so. I think people shy away from that word. But I'm not a feminist to the extent that men aren't men. I like men being men. And I like feeling girly and putting makeup on and stuff like that, but I don't think I should have to. And, and, and so in being a role model, I found, and maybe it's just because I'm in my 30s now, the best way to be a role model is to be myself and to be as honest with people about how I feel as possible. Because... I don't, I used to be all very judgmental about the posing nude and the things like that, even though I tried it back in the day. Like I was trying to be the sexy girl fight. It just didn't work for me. I was uncomfortable. And, and I think that the girls that it is working for, the girls that are comfortable with it and they like doing it, I think that's also important. Like Rhonda, when she posed nude for ESPN, she said it's important for them to see uh, a physical, a muscular girl. Like, and I, I, I think that's a really, that's a, I mean, the pictures were beautiful. You see a very muscular, like, strong woman, and I'm just like, I love the ESPN issue. I, I'm not into Maxim and that kind of stuff, but I understand why people are doing it, and I think that what, the conclusion I've come to in all of this, in, in, in analyzing a woman's place in the sport or how she wants to be represented in the sport, is you just have to be yourself, and if you're happy with yourself, then why not? I mean, Gina Carano's gorgeous in, in some of the stuff that she's done, and, and I, I mean, people look up to that, and if it gets, it gets them in the door, it, it's... 
it's cool. I just hope in my role model, like in the sport, people can understand, women can understand, especially that you can be kind of clumsy and goofy. Maybe not the ripped six pack girl, because I'm not I always carry a spare tire, you know, that kind of thing. And still have an enjoyable career, be a good fighter. Like, the, the things I value in other people, myself, is like loyalty and, and you know, integrity and kindness. You know, um, and that's what I hope people would see from me. I don't know if they see that from me or not. Like, I really don't know. I'm pretty damn loyal to my friends, um, but not at the risk of them being idiots. You know, I'll call them on their stuff. Like, I really will um, for the most part, or I'll exit, you know, a situation if I have to. Um, just be like, I can't talk about this. You got to deal with this on your own. Um, when you're a fighter, you're, it's kind of a solipsistic pursuit. Like you can't do it thinking about other people, which is funny because fighters spend most of their time thinking about other people. But you have to think about, you have to put yourself first. And um, that's actually made me really happy is being very selfish. And I know that it's not supposed to be that way, but I don't mind it. Like I live alone, I have my dog, I have my cats. I do everything for myself and I really like it. Like, and I, I want children and I want a family, but those things have just not, presented themselves to me in a way where they were more attractive than the life I'm living. And that's weird, but it's true. Like, I'm not going to be dishonest about it. My dog. I have a, such a great dog. Uh, I don't know. I, I, that's, that's to be continued. You know, I could say for not quitting in MMA. I have a terrible record. And, and, and yet, and I've lost so many fights, and I've done, made so many mistakes publicly, yet I think I think my peers still respect me and and that's cool like just by not quitting like that's I mean it's a crazy thing to just just keep doing what I like to do and not giving it up and I think that's it's a huge accomplishment like there's so many paths I could have taken and I just stuck on the one that was so hard and I'm glad like yeah. Did you have uh, brothers or sisters? <laughs> was on camera? <laughs> <laughs> Keep it on there, it's good. <laughs>